The Source Audio Collider is a multi-effects delay and reverb all-in-one compact box for only $350. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Let's find out. What is up everyone? Man Bun Melod here. Let's get into this pedal. First of all, I'm probably going to get some hate for this, but this is a budget pedal. I know what you're thinking, how can a $350 pedal be a budget pedal? But let me break it down. Since it's a delay and reverb pedal, you're pretty much getting each effect for $175. All right, $175 for a pedal isn't a bad deal at all. There are all kinds of great delay and reverb pedals in that price range. But how many of those pedals offer multiple effects, presets, MIDI control, expression control, and control through software? Yeah, pretty much that number is zero. Looking at some of the heavy hitters that offer the same features like Strymon, Eventide, or Boss, those pedals go for $400 plus, and they might not have all of these features. That being said, being a budget pedal isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I think it is something we should keep in the back of our minds when looking at this pedal. Next, let's move to size. The collider measures at 4.5 inches wide by 4.5 inches deep by two inches tall. For a multi-effects pedal, this is really on the smaller size. It's only about 50% wider than a standard Boss pedal. The size of this thing is a huge plus. Holding the pedal, it has a decent amount of weight. It has a brushed aluminum chassis, the switches, jacks, and most of the knobs look and feel good. The effect control in the middle is made of a softer plastic or rubber material, and it feels a little cheap to the touch, but the detents on the knob do feel pretty solid. This pedal is definitely packed with features, so let's go over a few. There are five delay and seven reverb engines. It has a dual DSP, which means each effect has its own processor. You can actually set up a delay and reverb, two delays or two reverbs. It has stereo inputs and outputs, which can also be set up as A and B channels. So one effect can be on channel A and the other effect can be on channel B. It has full MIDI control, which you know I love. There is a switch slash expression input, a control input, which I'm pretty sure is for source audio control devices, and a mini USB connection for updates and computer control. Mini USB, really? I don't understand why some pedal manufacturers insist on using mini USB, especially when they don't supply a cable with it. It's more likely someone will have a micro USB cable lying around. I was lucky enough to still have one mini USB cable I could find. On the top of the pedal, you have six control knobs, the effects selector knob, foot switches for delay and reverb, a switch to adjust the delay or reverb, a delay pattern switch, and a patch selector button. Both foot switches can be used to scroll through the presets. The delay foot switch can also be used as a tap tempo. When setting the delay slash reverb control switch to the lock position, it will prevent you from accidentally bumping a knob and changing the settings, and I really like that. There are four selectable patches, eight if adjusted in the software. There are a total of 128 patches available through MIDI control. Oh, and one really cool feature they don't tell you about is they inverse the phase of the output. Yeah, not a cool feature. And it can cause some issues, but I'll get into that later. Before we go into the sounds, let's see what it's like using this pedal. Let's pretend you get this out of the box and you're using it for the first time. We'll set up a delay first. Move the effect switch to delay, then select what delay effect you want. You can adjust the delay time with the delay knob or by tapping the delay foot switch. Once you use tap tempo, you can see that the delay LED switches between red and green instead of solid green. This shows you the tempo. If you lower the delay all the way down, the LED looks like it's flashing orange. I'm pretty sure it's trying to switch between green and red really fast. Once the LED is flashing green and red, it will flash until you power cycle the pedal where it will turn back to solid green. From there, we can adjust the rest of our parameters. Feedback controls how many repeats we have. The tone controls how bright or dark the repeats are. Control one and two and all the delay engines control the modulation depth and rate of repeats respectively. And the mix controls the mix between the wet and dry signals. You also have the pattern switch above the delay foot switch. You can switch between quarter notes right on the beat, dotted eighth or triplets. What of these control can actually be changed in the software. Now, it's probably not a bad idea to save the preset before moving to the reverb. To do that, just hold down the select button until it starts flashing and let go. If you want to save it on the same patch, just hold down the select button. You'll see it flash slowly a few times, then go solid. If you want to save it to another patch when the light is flashing, tap the select button until you get to the patch you want and hold down the select button. If you don't want to hit that button that many times and want to save it to the same patch, just hold down the select button until the 
preset LED starts flashing slowly. To adjust the reverb, move that selector switch to reverb and turn it on. Select your reverb engine and make your adjustments. Here, the delay controls the pre-delay of the signal. Feedback is the decay of the reverb or how long it rings out. Tone and mix do the same things. Controls one and two are dependent on what reverb engine you're using. And I'll get into that when I do the sound tests. Let's save this patch the same way as we did before. One thing I really like is how the pedal tells you what the settings of the patch are. For instance, when you go back to edit a patch, the knobs probably won't be where the patch is saved at. If you start rotating a knob, at some point you'll see the little LED in the upper right flash twice. This is where the value for this particular knob was saved at in the patch. Unfortunately, it only indicates what the patch was saved at. If you make some changes in the delay, switch to reverb, and switch back to delay, it will only show you what the saved parameters are, not what I adjusted to before switching to reverb. That's why it's always a good idea to save the patch before switching to the other effect. You also notice once you made a change, the preset LED will flash every second or so indicating you made a change but haven't saved the patch. Even if you adjust a knob back to where it was set, it still flashes. Once you're happy with your settings and have the saved patch, you should switch the effect selector to lock. This prevents any unwanted changes to your settings from an accidental knob touch. What is funny though, is if you adjust the knob in lock mode, the preset LED still flashes even though you made no changes. Kind of annoying. As you might've realized, you can hit the select button to switch between patches. You can also scroll between patches by holding down the delay or reverb foot switches. Unfortunately, the respective effect has to be off in order to scroll patches, I don't think this would be very useful in live scenarios, but you should probably be using the MIDI control anyway. Now, let's see how this pedal sounds. So it's gonna be a pretty simple sound test. I just have my guitar going into the collider, which goes into the input of my GP2C, and I'm using the cab clone output for it. We're just gonna do clean uh, signal tests just to see how it sounds. So we'll start with a digital delay. Uh, I'll set the delay out right out there, feedback here-ish. Uh, the tone, we're going to turn all the way up, so we're not cutting any brightness out of the signal. And then our controls 1 and 2, which are the modulation, uh, we're just going to cut those all the way down because we don't want modulation right now. And then the mix, we'll keep a little higher just so uh, we can hear it a little bit better. And you can really hear those delays in there. Uh, they sound just like... Uh, the signal so that's what you're going to get with the digital delay it's just really a carbon copy of what uh what you're playing so let's try the analog next and you can definitely hear a tone change there in the analog so let's go to tape Again, we got a little bit of a tone change. So basically the analog is a emulation of the bucket brigade and the tape is an emulation of a tape delay. So we go back down to digital and then we can see kind of what our other controls do. So that's how I had it before. Now let's turn the tone all the way down and kind of kill that brightness. And now you can hear it sounds kind of muddy. So we'll turn that up a little bit. So we're affecting the sound of the signal a little bit with a tone. And then we can add in some modulation. So we'll just turn it all the way up, which we're probably not gonna to do, but you can really hear that, right? So control two is gonna control the frequency. And then this control or control one is going to control the depth of the modulation. So having a little bit of uh, modulation in there isn't so bad, you know, obviously it depends on what you're looking for. So we can do the same thing with the analog. We'll cut a little bit of the tone, add some modulation. And then mix down a little bit on that. And then let's try tape. And to me, the modulation is really evident there. So we'll turn that down a little bit more.
All right. So those are the three kind of basic delays I think most people will use. And let's try uh, reverse. It'll be a little interesting. Turn the mix up just so we can hear a little bit better. We'll turn the modulation down. So that's, to me, a little weird, but it is what it is. I'm going to go to oil can. Eh, that one's not too bad. I don't know if I would use it a whole lot, but... Not a bad effect to have. So uh, there's definitely some good applications there with the delay and they really don't sound all that bad. All right, so let's go uh, to our reverb. So we're going to uh, change the reverb control, turn off our delay, turn our reverb. So we'll start with uh, the room. And in this one, uh, so you've got your pre-delay here, which I'll just turn down and your feedback is basically gonna be you know, how, uh, how long it rings out. So I don't know, we'll set that somewhere around there. Your tone's gonna be your brightness control. Uh, kind of like the rest of them, set that somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then the controls one and two are going to change depending on the reverb. So this one uh, is going to control the bass. So kind of like the tone where it controls the brightness, this will control the bass. So having it all the way down means your bass is going to be all the way down. And then having it all the way up means your bass will be kind of flat. We'll put it around there for now. And then this uh, control two is going to control your modulation depth. So we'll keep that eh, just a little low for now. Uh, or very low, and see how it sounds. Okay, let's add some modulation there. Let's add a lot of modulation, why not? That's not too bad sounding, so let's uh, just move on to Hall. And for Hall, your controls one is also going to be your bass, uh, just like the last one. And your control two is going to be the Hall size. So you actually have five sizes. You're not going to have a, a gradual jump between sizes. You're actually going to have, uh, you know, size one is going to be around here. Size two is going to be somewhere around here. Three will be here. Four will be somewhere around here. And then five will be here. So the higher you go up, the bigger the Hall size. So let's go all the way down to the lowest one just to try out. Keep some of the controls there. All right, so let's go to uh, the biggest hall size. That's a little, uh, a little big for me, a little big for my britches. So let's go to three. It's also pretty big for a hall. I look kind of like that first one. Uh, I think that out pretty well. Well, that's the hall. Let's move to the true spring. Again, this is going to control your bass, and this is going to control the uh, different length of springs. So you have three uh, here. So you have your shortest, your mid, and the, the longest. So let's try out these. Go to the mid. Or long spring. All right, let's move on to plate. In plate, you're going to have the bass control again, 
And then here you're going to have plate sizes like the last two. Uh, you have three plate sizes, so let's start with uh, the smallest one. The middle plate. And then the big plate. And I think those four reverbs, the room, hall, true spring, and plate, are probably going to be the ones that will be used most often. Um, but let's uh, check out the other ones. So we got shimmer. So this one, the controls are going to be a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be a mix between the normal reverb and a shimmer reverb. And then this is going to be the regeneration of the reverb or regeneration of the shimmer. So uh, let's turn the regen out about there. We'll just keep it in the middle uh, and let's, uh, let's see how it sounds. So you can hear that uh, high pitched shimmer in there. And if we turn the control one all the way down, so we just have normal reverb. And we don't have any of that shimmer. Turn it all the way up, we get all kinds of shimmer. So you can kind of hear what that shimmer does. And then we'll go turn control two all the way up, which is the regeneration of the shimmer. That's a little much, but it gives you an idea of what the shimmer does. So yeah, if you're going to use shimmer, you probably want to be somewhere in the middle of these controls. Give you something maybe that uh, might not sound too bad. There you go. So let's go to E-Dome or E-Normo-Dome. And this one... We're going to have the bass and modulation depth, kind of like the uh, first one or the room reverb. So let's set that around there. Uh, let's see how this sounds. We'll turn the modulation up. Yeah, so that's supposed to sound like you're in a really big arena. Um, you know, add some chorus in there for modulation. And uh, yeah, it doesn't sound too bad. And then on to swell. This one's a little interesting. So we got the swell sensitivity and the swell time. Uh, this one I haven't used a whole lot. So the sensitivity obviously has something to do with um, you know, when it senses, not exactly sure how it works. And then we'll change our swell time, turn that down a little bit in here. So we can hear how quickly that, uh, that swell goes into effect. So that's a really long swell time. So yeah, that's pretty much swell. Um, and really that's pretty much all of them. Uh, in my opinion, the delays, they're okay. Uh, they work as delays. They're just not as exciting. Um, and they sound maybe a little artificial to me, especially with the analog and, and the tape delays. Uh, and I typically use digital and analog in most of my uh, plane, which works with my plane style. Um, so yeah, they work, but I don't think they're anything that's kind of out of this world. For the reverbs, I, I do think they sound pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I'm a hall guy myself. I like to use a lot of hall reverbs, um, and I, I do like that reverb quite a bit. While the controls of this pedal aren't too bad as is, using the Source Audio Nero software really opens up some options. So let's see what it's all about. Connecting the pedal is simple with Windows 10, which is what I've used. Once connected using a mini USB cable, the pedal drivers are ready to go really quick. Download the Nero desktop software from the Source Audio website and install. The file is small and installs quick as well. 
Once you open the program and your pedal is connected to your PC, you should see it in your connections list. Here you can update the firmware, change hardware options, and open, change, and save patches. I updated the firmware on this pedal when I got it and it was like all that really fast. Going into the hardware options, you can see a lot of settings. I'm not going to go into all of these, but some of the key ones are changing your MIDI channel, your preset extension from four to eight patches, and power up state, so the effects are on or off when you power up the pedal. Going into the patch settings, you can see all the settings on the pedal in the middle, plus some, as well as a list of save patches on the right. Again, I won't go into all of it, but you can unlock each engine. This will unlock the reverb effects for the delay engine and delay effects for the reverb. This will let you use two delays or two reverbs if you want. You can also set the effect routing mode between cascade and parallel. Cascade is like having the delay effect output go into the reverb effect, whereas with parallel, the delay and reverb effects are applied to the dry signal separately and then summed afterwards. This isn't so important if you're using delay and reverb, but if you're using two delays, this can really come in handy. You can also split the effects so the delay is on one input and output and the reverb is on the other. On the right of the window, you'll see a list of your patches. You can recall, edit, save, copy, import, and export patches. You can also download or upload patches to the cloud. To access the cloud, you'll need to log in, but you can only create an account with the Nero app. I'm not sure why that's the case, but it's not hard to do, just adds an extra unnecessary step in my opinion. Once you're in the cloud, you can see all the patches uploaded by users. Looks like there were almost 200 presets on here when I last looked, but who knows how good they are. There are also factory presets, but there are only about 10 available for the collider. Overall, the Nero software isn't the best I've ever used for a pedal, but it does the job, usually. Uh, it connects to the pedal quickly and hasn't crashed on me at all. If you use it, try not to adjust anything on the pedal while using the software. The software might not respond properly. Visually, the user interface could use some work, but overall, it adds a lot more control to the pedal. Overall, is this pedal worth grabbing? Yes and no. It really depends on what you need it for. Like I said earlier, it's a budget pedal. There is a lot stuffed into this little guy. While it does a lot, I don't think it does anything particularly great. Can this thing replace a Strymon Timeline and Big Sky? No way. But those are $900 combined. And why would you ever want to replace those anyway? But if you are in need of a MIDI controllable, multi effects, delay, and reverb pedal, but don't want to break the bank, this is not a bad option at all. More than likely, this pedal might not last you forever, but it's a good in-between while you save up for a set of Strymon, Boss, or Edmontine pedals. Yes, there are many others, but you get what I'm saying. Well, that's everything I've got on the Source Audio Collider. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, hit that thumbs up button down there, it really helps me out a lot. And if you wanna hear more about what I'm working on, like gear reviews, tips, tricks, and techniques, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever I release a new video. But hey, until next time, Rock on.